Two months ago on Karate Dojo Waku, we previously discussed how Gichin Funakoshi might hate the Shotokan we see today because his son has changed a lot of things. To put it very briefly, the change came because of the influence from Japanese martial arts, especially from Iaido and Kendo. So today I've actually trained the Kendo Kata and Kihon in order to deeply understand the changes that might have happened in the past. Let's get started. So to get started with the Kendo practice, the Kihon, I had to wear two types of protectors. The protector for your stomach and the protector for your growing area. The first part, the for the growing area, this is called a tare in Japanese. In the middle, you see um, two Japanese, you know, big letters on their tare. It's basically their name. So it's like our um, karate um, belt or obi with the name on, right? So you would first, you know, tuck it to the back, make a cross on the back, and tie it right under the where the name is um, printed in. So that's the first step. And after you're done with that, make sure they're nice and tight. That avoids any attack coming to your lower body. And then from there, we move on to the do, which is the protector for your stomach. This was a very hard material. It is a lot um, stronger and a lot more sturdy than the one we use um, in karate. So you wrap it through the back and then there's a hole right at the chest area and then you tie it on both sides. Um, this was a very heavy, unexpectedly pretty heavy one. So if you have seen the episode one of my um, Karate Sensei Tries Kendo episode, um, you can see myself wearing the do during the sparring and it was so heavy. I couldn't move like I usually do. So, you know, no wonder that's going to keep everybody safe in Kendo. And then from here, we move on to the Kihon. So we first started off with the basic swing. You place the right hand and then the left hand um, at the end. The key point he's mentioning is that the name or the, the where the string is comes to the top. The other side of the string identifies where the actual cutting edge is. So you want to point that down. Step one is you, you moving the right leg forward and swinging back. They are um, exaggerating the movement, so it's easy for me to see. And you know, you have to bring the, the ken or the uh, bokuto shinai, whatever you want to call it, um, all the way back. And then you want to swing it forward. Let's give a first try. When I did that, it hit my head. And that's because the ball was too close to me. In karate, you bend your elbow to lead any motion going forward. However, in kendo, when they swang the sword, um, there weren't so much of an elbow bend. It was more of keeping everything um, long and swinging it from the top. You know, when you put the men on, which is the head protector, it, you even have to think about this more. So this was a very um, key point um, of doing kendo. Next step was moving back and striking. So you want to slide your left leg back and then swing the men. And they repeat this over and over for warm up. He mentions that he does, or when um, the students usually in Japan does over 100 for just the warm up. <laughs> How crazy is that? Here was, I was asking about the timing of the swing. Um, it's same as karate. As you step in, the step in timing and the swing, the impact timing matches. So the center of your gravity moves and you have to match that with your technique. For example, if you step in and then swing, you're going to be unbalanced. So you have to match the timing like he is doing. Very precise, just like how we punch. Now we're going to be trying it out 10 times slowly. My next question was about the posture. When I asked him what kind of posture they have to have, he said straight down, just like karate. If you, you know, clutch forward, then the technique becomes very short and small. So the reach is not far. So, but if you, you know, lean back, you can't reach far too. So you have to keep your arm body straight and move at the same time. I also asked this question, in Shotokan Karate especially, you bend your knee and you push forward. That's what gives it the momentum. So the power is, you know, straightforward, aligned to the front. However, in Kendo, it's a arc. So I was having a difficulty connecting my lower body movements to this circular motion. And I asked him, what was the tip? 
one of the phrases they mentioned was shinai o nageru yo ni ute, which basically translates to throw the sword out. Not swing, but throw it out. You basically have to utilize the weight of the shinai. And another phrase that the sensei mentioned was to emphasize the tip of the sword. You, ma you imagine the weight at the tip of the sword and you want to swing that down. The, wing, the weight is not at the, the hand part, but on the tip. And this advice helped me a lot. And you can utilize this for kicks as well. And it was a very com um, similar concept as the Taekwondo kick. If you haven't checked that video out, I heavily recommend because there is a huge similarity in between these two martial arts. With the throwing concept and the weight at the tip, I gave it a try one more time. Wait. And it gave so much more power. Sit. Sit. Go. Up. Go. Up. Sit. Hot. Good. Zip. Zip. So through the Kendo Kihon, the component that I was able to see that changed over time from the Okinawan Karate to Japanese Karate, or I guess Shotokan, is the timing aspect. Let's take a look at this video from the series of Yusuke in Okinawa. The two videos that I'm going to be introducing are the Kata videos from the Shurite style. To be exact, Matsubai Shiryu and Shorin Ryu. I'd like you to pay attention to how the technique is delivered after the leg lands, the gedan barai, the blocks, the attacks, punches, strikes. Everything is slightly after the leg stabilizes itself. Now let's take a look at the kendo and the karate punch. Karate punches in shotokan are delivered at the same time as your center of gravity travels with the leg. Therefore, there is a slight timing difference, and this is the reason why, why people describe Shotokan as being a little more dynamic than other styles. What do you guys think about my observation? Let me know in the comment section below. In the next episode, I'm going to be trying out their advanced version of the Kihon. Please look forward to it, subscribe to my channel, and if you'd like to learn Karate from myself, then please consider joining my online lessons, both group and private. I will see you in my next video.